So you were ambassador in Venezuela twice. I was. Um, the first time you were um, sort of removed by Mr. Chavez. Uh, talk to us a little bit about those those years and um, how, what you think precipitated the removal, your removal as ambassador, and then how it was, how it evolved that you came back a second time as ambassador to Venezuela. There are indeed uh, two ways um, to look at my engagement in Venezuela. Um, uh, I was ambassador uh, for the United States from 2007 until 2010. For the um, first portion of that time, I was uh, President Bush's ambassador. Uh, I was welcomed with um, you know, full diplomatic honors at the beginning of that uh, tenure, but um, uh, relations became more tense um, over the course of my first um, 13, 14 months in the country. President Morales of uh, Bolivia had expelled the American ambassador, accusing him of complicity in some social difficulties in a remote province there, baselessly, I would add. Um, and virtually immediately, we thought, whoops, we'll see how this plays with President Chavez, because we assumed that, in, in point of fact, um, he, there would be some reaction uh, to, uh, uh, to that expulsion. And um, then on September 11th in 2008, President uh, Chavez went on national television and uh, 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 expressed his solidarity with the decision by President Morales to uh, expel my colleague and said in solidarity with that, I would be, uh, be given 72 hours to leave the country. They were apparently not entirely aware, or at least his office wasn't, that I was in fact out of the country. Um, uh, then, some months later, uh, when President uh, Obama uh, attended the Summit of the Americas in Trinidad and Tobago. There was a, a brief encounter between the two presidents, on the margins of which um, uh, Secretary and Foreign Minister or the two presidents, it, the issue of restoring relations at the ambassador, ambassadorial level uh, was raised. And uh, uh, though it had not happened before um, that an, an American ambassador expelled formally and declared persona non grata, had returned to the country from which he had been expelled, I got the call from the Assistant Secretary of State um, on behalf of the, uh, the President and Secretary asking if I would go back, which is what I did. So I, I, I in turn, um, I went back to uh, uh, Venezuela um, in time for the Fourth of July celebration um, in 2008 and, uh, 2009 and finished my tour as ambassador there. Let's talk about Mr. Chavez a little bit. Why was he so popular, and has that popularity really extended over to President Maduro? Well, um, it was interesting uh, to observe uh, President Chavez, if you will, in situ. Um, I heard, you know, many um, uh, disparaging remarks from those from his critics, and observed an almost reverential uh, um, uh, affection for him among the poorest of the poor. Chavez was able to talk to the common people, um, and they appreciated that. Uh, secondly, he um, uh, announced a whole series of social missions designed to alleviate at least um, some of the suffering of the poorest of the poor. Uh, and he played, too, um, to um, the, the more nationalist sentiments of those who were um, uh, looking to see Venezuela assert itself, and in particular, assert its independence from um, what he came to call the empire, the, you know, the rapacious north, meaning the United States. So um, there was a, the sense that Chavez came from the people, that he spoke their language, and that he was concerned about, um, uh, about their welfare. Um, the, those who opposed him believed that he, um, he very seriously damaged the country's democratic institutions, and that the space for um, um, real you know, sort of opposition political activity um, pretty consistently shrunk um, over the course of his, uh, of his administration. And has the well-being of the average Venezuelan been proved since Chavez took over in 98? Well, it appears, uh, according to most international statistics, that um, poverty was um, uh, reduced um, to some degree. 
uh, when Chavez came into office, it was estimated that as many as, as much as 60% of the Venezuelan population um, fell into classes they would call them D and E, or the lower part of C, D, and E, and they used a five, a five um, layered scale. Mm -hmm. There was an enormous amount of poverty uh, in, in Venezuela. And he made um, uh, addressing the issue of poverty a central part of his, um, uh, his, his political um, uh, dialogue with, with uh, the nation. He absolutely spent money on social programs, but also on, on foreign policy issues. And, and to some degree, President Maduro now is dealing with uh, the consequences of, of the fact that often Chavez uh, preferred to invest in social programs rather than infrastructure or making capital investments in the oil industry, et cetera. And as a consequence, they have blackouts and shortages and what have you. Some poverty was reduced, but much of, of the productive sector in Venezuela, virtually all, um, most of the, the, the non-oil industries, have all struggled um, with the um, uh, Chavista or the Bolivarian attempt to transform the nation into a socialist state, which he always maintained um, was his goal. Do you think the, the recent sort of thaw between Venezuela and Colombia, the two presidents met at the border, um, committed to work together um, on issues like you know, human trafficking and drug trafficking, do you think that's gonna make a difference? Is that gonna kind of support some of the U.S.'s policy objectives in the region? Well, I, I think that Almost everyone in the region hopes that it makes a decided difference. Colombia and Venezuela have a very important trade relationship. I think both sides want to see that prosper. Um, they actually have an energy relationship, and, um, and I, if I'm not mistaken, notwithstanding uh, Venezuela's Im immense energy reserves, they actually import a certain amount of um, uh, natural gas from mm. Colombia. I think the United States wants to see this dialogue prosper and hopes that it results in uh, not only better relations between the two countries, but in uh, enhanced cooperation across the board within the hemisphere. Now, we can't close off this conversation without talking about Mr. Snowden. Yes. Um, will he or won't he be accepted into Venezuela? And what would be the consequence to our relationships with Venezuela if, if they do provide him asylum? First. There is the question of logistics. Uh, Mr. Snowden has to get to Venezuela in order to be sheltered in Venezuela, in order to be granted asylum there. President Maduro has offered asylum. Uh, um, but in the meantime, Mr. Snowden has, um, as I think we all know, asked for at least temporary asylum um, in Russia. The United States has made very clear to um, many governments that um, we, um, we want uh, uh, Mr. Snowden to be returned to the United States um, to face uh, charges here. I think the bottom line is it would make um, renewing the conversations that have recently been suspended between the United States and Venezuela aimed at improving the bi bilateral relationship more difficult. The uh, Inter-American Press Association has decided to hold its annual meeting in Denver. I wonder if you could help us in Colorado understand the significance of the organization and its role with respect to the freedom of the press um, and other important issues. Clearly, um, the free press, the frequently courageous free press, um, uh, played a, uh, a central role in precipitating um, the return to democracy or an embrace of democracy, and um, as countries uh, embrace democracy in the consolidation of uh, um, democratic practice um, throughout the hemisphere. And of course, we know that it's immensely important to our own political life. Mm -hmm. So I, it's a great organization. I think, uh, I think uh, it, would be, uh, it, it would be a real pleasure for, for Denver to host them. Well, thank you very much, Ambassador Duddy, for being with us here on World Denver Talks. Well, I very much enjoyed my visit. Thank you for having me. Uh, Denver's been terrific. It's my first time here, and I've, I've really enjoyed both the city and, and, and the opportunity to explore some of the area just out in and around the, in the, the city.